And if this is the first time attending one of our webinars, um, you'll notice that your microphone is muted, and that's because I'm going to be the only one talking today. If you have questions, there's a questions panel on the right side of your screen usually in the webinar toolbar. And if you type your question into that box, I will answer them as I go if I can, or I'll come back to all of them at the end of the webinar. And so let's um, go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to open up membership. And the screen is going to look mostly the same as it does in version 20, but we have a couple of additional buttons here. The main one is the dashboard, and that's mainly what we're going to be talking about today. You can also get to the dashboard not only from this button right here, but you can also come up to special functions, and then there's a dashboard button up there as well. The dashboard brings us the opportunity to view and print charts and graphs. And this is something that a lot of folks have been asking for for quite some time, so we're really excited about this. Here in membership, we have four graphs. Um, someone said there's no sound. Uh, I think that's on your computer specifically. Let me send them a message. Um, if, if other people are having trouble hearing, definitely let me know. The sound is working for other folks, so I went ahead and let that person know. Um, so let's continue moving on. Okay, so across the top of the dashboard screen, we have on and off switches for each of the graphs. That's the first thing. So if we toggle those switches, you can see that it ends up um, making the graphs larger. Um, next to that, we have colors. This allows us, you know, to make it look however we like. Some of them are harder to see than others, um, but it gives you quite a few opportunities if you want to change how it looks. We'll just stick with the default. And then you've got reset to default layout if you, you know, change a bunch of things and you want to restore it to the original. You can use this bar in the middle to make them different sizes, going both directions, and they all move separately from one another. So let's go ahead and reset that. And let's go ahead and start with our attendance graph. Now in each of the corners, you have an expand button to make that specific graph take up the whole screen. So we'll go ahead and look at them like this, because it's going to work better for us. So in the attendance graph, the first thing you do is you choose your events or groups and classes. You can select all, like I have selected all the events here, um, or you can just select the ones that you want to see. So maybe I only want to see my Sunday worship. Or maybe I want to see, let's see, I wonder if any of my classes have attendance. Let's take a look. It looks like that's just showing us for the Sunday worship, so we'll leave that as is. You can also set a specific date range. You can go back into the past. And that gives us a whole lot more information. And you can choose to view the totals. And what that is coming from is the totals of the number of people you have checked as having attended. Or you can use counted if you just enter a total number instead of checking each individual person. So that's pretty much all there is to the attendance graph. Um, you can click print if you want to print this. You can choose to do it in portrait or landscape. In this case, landscape would definitely work better for us, so I'll choose that. And if you want to go to the page header, you can change the font. 
And if we click print, we'll see our little preview come up. And that's pretty much all there is to that. Let's move on to the next one. So I clicked that corner button, which then minimized it back down to the normal size. Next, let's look at a list item distribution graph. Now this pie chart will let us choose any of the list fields in our database. That's any one that you have to choose an option from the drop down. We're currently looking at status code and it gives us a key over here on the right side of the screen to tell us what codes it's showing and what color they are. And we can choose to view for members, visitors, any other categories you might have added, or if we only want to view members, we could uncheck visitors, and that adjusts our numbers a little bit. Um, just to take another peek, we can look at the directory report order field, for example, and we can see that the vast majority of our people are primaries. And then we've got quite a few children, quite a few secondaries, and very few fours and fives are individual separately and secondary primary separately. And the print will be exactly the same as it was for the attendance graph. The next two graphs down here um, are both set up for using age ranges. I'm going to remove the previous to the line item and the attendance so that we can look at these. Now, if you're familiar with the step report in donations, adding our age ranges is going to be very, very similar to setting our age ranges. So you type the low number and it calculates the high number. So I'm going to set up some categories of ages here. I'm going to do 0 through 18. Oh, actually, that reminds me. We need to actually do the low number for the ranges, not the high number. And I made the mistake of doing the high number. So it did 0 through 17, when really I want 0 through 18. So I'm going to click this red minus. And I'm going to change it from 18 to 19 so that now my first age range is 0 to 18. And then I'm going to go from, uh, let, I'm going to do 19 through 29 as my next age range. So then I'll put 30 in the next box. And you can see now it's going 0 to 18, 19 to 29. And 30 has no upper limit, so that would be anyone 30 and older. I'm going to do a couple other decades in here so that we have a bit more of a breakdown to take a look at. And when I collapse that, it brings up my age ranges here. And like the list item distribution pie chart that we looked at, this list items by age range shows us an even more specific breakdown of any of these list items. So we're looking at status code now. And each of the status codes are listed across the bottom. And the number of people is across the left-hand side. And the age ranges are what are color-coded in this version. So you can see most of our visitors, we don't have an age for. They're unknown. And as you look, you know, almost all of the associate members are between 40 and 49. Actually, all of them are. So that's interesting. It gives us a really good visual reference of how people are split up into the different codes. If we look at gender, that's just going to be male and female. Um, that gives us a really nice big visual aid. And we can look again at directory report order and see, you know, a visual representation of any of these list fields. Now we can have it sort by the total or by the description. And what that means is when we sort by the total, primary comes first because it has the most people. 
then child comes next, then secondary, individual separately, and primary secondary separately. If we sort by the description, then it goes alphabetically. Then we can take a look at the age range distribution. And this age range setup is going to be the same. So I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. Um, I could do any other age ranges I wanted to as well. This one is strictly going to show a distribution of the age ranges. So if I do 0 through 19, whoop, meant to do 30 there. And there we go. And when we collapse it up, we've got our age breakdown. So the age range distribution and the list item distribution are basically combined into the list items by age range. So if I turn the list item distribution back on, you can see here how it's um, the list items by age range on the left here, how that is showing a hybrid of our list item distribution and our age range distribution. And if we reset to default, we can take a look at how they all look together. So that covers basically everything about the dashboard. Since we have a few minutes left still, I'll show you one other thing that has been added that people have been asking for for a long time in um, Church Windows. We now have the ability to transfer people between members and donations. Now, as soon as I click that, I get this big box of text for all of the information I need to be aware of before I do that transfer. So you'll want to read through all of that for sure before going forward. I'm going to go ahead and cancel because I just wanted to let you know that that is now available. You can transfer people from membership to donations or from donations to membership. Just be aware that because the two databases store different information, if you move someone from a member or a visitor to a donor, then you lose a lot of their information. Um, some folks are asking about the ability to get um, contributions information charted. That is available in the donations module for your members, but it's not available as a chart here in membership. And there will be another webinar coming up to show you a preview of the donations dashboards. So, Marcia, to answer your question, you can definitely do a contributions chart, but that's going to be in the donations module, not here. Um, then someone's asking about for the attendance, um, if you can add individual counts and the total. There's not a way to do both at the same time. You would have to do one and then the other. Um, and then percentages on the pie chart. If you hover over, you get percentages. Um, so that's how you can see those percentages. Um, if we click print, uh, there's not a way to get the percentages onto the printout. Um, but we can have the developers take a look at the possibility of adding that kind of information in the future. Um, the difference between counted and total, someone is asking about. So in 
attendance, when you're, when you're entering attendance, you have the option of either checking people's names, and that's what total means. You also have the option of just typing in a number up at the top of the attendance entry screen, and that would be counted. So counted is the number that you type in and you don't check anybody's names off. Totals is the number of people whose names you've checked as having attended. I think that's the majority of the questions I'm seeing. Um, if you want to save a graph, you would do a print, and then from the print, you can export it as a PDF um, or as any of these other types of documents. If you wanted to save it as an image, you would choose graphic document. Um, if you wanted to take it to Microsoft Excel, you could do that. I don't know why you would do that with a chart, but <laughs> you could. Um, rich text document would take it to Microsoft Word. Um, and so those are all your options if you want to save your graphs. Um, other than that, they're, when they're in this screen, they're just in edit mode, essentially, so that you can flip back and forth. Belinda wanted to know if you can enter both the counted for the attendance and check people. You can do both, because um, certainly a lot of times you do a head count and get a total number, and then you want to actually check the people. Um, you can for sure do that. Um, you can see actually in my data here, if I toggle back and forth between the two, I did record counted for January, but not for February. So you can see how you can do both or either based on um, my demo data here. Other questions or any questions that I skipped over somehow? Go ahead and type them in if you've got them. We have reached the 20 minute time, um, so feel free to leave the webinar if you don't have any other questions. Otherwise, um, type those questions in and I will get to them as they come up. Thank you all for attending today's webinar. Version 21 will be out soon. We're sending it out in batches um, of a certain number of users at a time so that we're still able to keep up with the call volume so nobody has to wait too terribly long for a call back. Um, another question about hovering on the bar graphs. We don't get percentages. We just get totals. It's just the pie graphs that give us percentages because the pie graphs represent so many out of 100. Uh, Jean, yes, you can definitely retroactively enter attendance data. Um, there is, in membership, there's no longer um, a changing of the years. You can always go back into the past or forward into the future. Uh, counted is reported in attendance entry. Um, I'll close this and we can take a look real quick. So if I look back, let's say this past Sunday, um, for my contemporary worship, I can do, let me grab my little highlighter here. I can do persons present, that's counted, or I can check people present. So those are the two different ways of entering attendance. So persons present means count. <laughs> and the check marks are the total. All right, any other questions that I missed? I'm glad you think it's cool, Jean. I do too. <laughs> it definitely gives us a lot more options than previous versions. 
Uh, Mary Lee's asking for totals at the top of the bar graph. Um, the totals you get when you hover, um, I think they decided not to have the totals displayed because it was getting too cluttered. Um, but if you hover, that gives you your total for each of the days. Um, if you wanted a total, you know, for the entire year, that would be better off run as a report um, as opposed to a graph. Yes, Cheryl, you can go back um, and enter previous counts and dates, absolutely, anytime you'd like. No problem. Any other questions, folks? It looks like we've got quite a few of you still in the room. If you have questions, even if they're only partially entered, go ahead and hit send so I know that you're typing. Um, and if you don't have any questions, go ahead and say goodbye for the day. I will stick around as long as there are questions coming in. Thank you too, Maggie and Teresa and everybody else. Thank you very much for attending today. We hope you are looking forward to 21 as much as we are. Yes, Evelyn, none of the um, none of the permissions for the module access will change unless you go in and change them under the security settings. So that'll all stay the same. Kelly version 21 is coming out over the next couple of weeks. Um, so far, our our cloud customers, those who, who do the web hosted version of Church Windows, will be the first to be updated. And then from there, it will go out to the users in small batches so that we don't have too many calls that we can't keep up with because we want to make sure everyone gets prompt responses still. Um, so next couple of weeks, you should get an email from us with the download file. No problem. All right, any final questions for my last few folks hanging on? The number to the left of the list items by age range. Ah, uh, that's the left-hand column is the totals. So um, if I hover over this, it's showing me how many of each of the age ranges have for primary, um, for child, etc. So you can see that the total of the children is right around um, 28 or 9, and if I add that, um, it looks like it's 27 based on the math of the the amount of folks um, who are assigned child. So this age column is going to be, or the number column here is going to be the total amount of people per code, um, regardless of their ages. So that's the total total on the far left. Any final questions? All right. Well, if there are no long, no more questions, I'm going to go ahead and close out the room. Thank you all again for attending, and have a great rest of your day.